Thank you for tuning in to the SMB Labs podcast presented by 910 West. We experiment with small business so you don't have to. Today's guest is Victoria Trafton. And now, without further ado, here's your host, Jasmine Holmes. Today, I'm here with referral strategist, Victoria Trafton, and we're going to talk about uh, referral marketing. Um, for a lot of people, they consider referrals and networking. They may not actually consider that marketing. I, I guess for some reason, it, it doesn't ch- uh, jive with what we feel is sort of traditional marketing uh, postcards and, and uh, digital and whatnot, but really, it's all part of the same umbrella. And simply put, it's one of the most effective ways smaller businesses can um, get new customers. It's it's one of the least expensive um, and one of the easiest things to do. Um, however, as a business grows and transitions, so as you develop your expertise um, and really become an expert in your field, and as your business matures and you get busier, a lot of times the networking that you do early on in the business uh, needs to shift and change and grow with the business. Uh, we tend to start out networking on our own. Um, And what we find as our business grows and matures is that really networking shouldn't be a solo sport anymore. It needs to be a team effort and we need to have some strong referral partners. And so we've got Victoria Trafton here, who, as I mentioned earlier, is a a referral marketing veteran, a referral marketing strategist, really, um, who's been doing this for years and years and years. So Victoria, I'm going to turn it over to you and and let uh, you tell us a little bit about your background with referral marketing and, and your philosophy on it, and then we'll dive in. Great. Thanks, Jasmine. Thanks for inviting me. I'm glad to hear, be here and have an opportunity to talk about what you said. It's the evolution of referral marketing. So when I first started out in referral marketing, there were lots of things to teach. I had some excellent curriculum, and I taught people to literally go out and network. And I believe even today, the fundamentals are essential. You have to go out and meet people, and you have to teach people what you do, the 60-second commercial. Everything applies, but as you said, and what I've seen over the years is that as people tend to grow and evolve, not just their business, but today's world of entrepreneurs, very, very different than when I first started. It's not just small business tradespeople, it's professionals who can independently help their clients. It's people with experience and know-how. And that takes a lot more than just going out to get a 60 second commercial. So today, definitely, it's all about who you, who you can help and who can help you. And how do you work with a small group of people to not just build your reputation, but to create those referrals. Excellent, excellent. Well, I'm excited to dig in and talk some more about that. But I think you hit on a great point to get us started, which is we are seeing a fundamental shift in all sorts of consumer behavior, which is definitely impacting um, how businesses, all forms of marketing. Um, And so how do you see, you know, from your perspective, what's really that shift as it's happening in relation to referral marketing and networking and and, and, uh, how can, uh, what should businesses be doing or how should they be shifting with those as the, as it changes? Yeah. And it's, it's the same. It's the idea that today you want to create a tribe years and years ago, you wanted to do mass marketing. And even large companies aren't winning market share through mass marketing. You're speaking a specific language to the right people. So imagine when you first met me, I was suggesting people belong to three groups. You need diversity, you need a lot of people, you need to talk Mm -hmm. to a lot of people. And given that we both live in Phoenix, it's gotten a little more crowded in here, in this area over the last 10 years. Yeah. So networking and running around all over the place takes too much time and the busy person can't afford to do it. So you have to establish yourself within a group of people, your community, where you become known. And if you work with partners, they are the ones that are keeping your name front and center. They are the ones that know how to talk about your business. And they're not only speaking on your behalf, they're listening for opportunities or they're naturally connecting you with other people. So it's that those people, have to be in the room with you. You don't want to be having as many people as possible, so referral groups. You have a dedicated group of people, Mm -hmm. they're once a week usually, willing and anxious to give you a referral. But if they don't go with you to larger events, you're probably gonna end up referring yourself to other people in the room. 
it, it doesn't expand, but taking a handful of those people to a larger group. Chambers, classic example, if they have a referral group in yeah. a chamber, great. They're meeting once a week, they're having that education ongoing, and now go to events together. Look for prospects for your partner. Bring them into conversations that have already set the stage that highlight what you do. So it's like having a handful of agents working on your behalf. Oh, and without that, you know, so one is a busy owner. If you can network more than the owner, that's what you have to, that's what you have to offer. I think you're on the board of a chamber and you're very, very busy. So if there's somebody younger or somebody newer in their business who can network on your behalf, they're going to do that happily because they need to get known. You're already known, right? And you well, can that person with credibility. And that's actually a really interesting idea. I met a sales consultant recently and he's taking the same approach to sales. So to hiring a salesperson in the company saying, um, you know, hire somebody who's young and hungry versus trying to hire a salesperson who's got all the experience in the industry contacts because we've, I've heard so many horror stories of where somebody thinks they find the exact right person and it just never works out. So it's right. kind of interesting to hear you, uh, you talking about that on kind of the more networking side of the fence um, and the, the, the more traditional on the more marketing side of the fence, but sounds like that, that uh, flips over to that, to that same principle there. It's the same idea of that idea about the hungry young salesperson. A, they'll scramble. They'll pretty much chase any lead they can, and that's good. But it also has to do with people's natural tendencies. And I work a lot with behavioral styles. So if you have that extrovert, that has a capacity for a lot of people. And they get a lot of ideas, and they connect a lot of people, and they have a lot of great things to share. But then you get the more introverted person who can go deep, who can provide these outstanding solutions, and who can fill in the gaps that the butterfly approach up here was was stirring it all up, and then the other person can drill it down. Okay. If those two people are part of a complementary set of solutions for their prospects. They're working together. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess one of the things you're looking for when you're looking for those folks for your tribe, those referral partners, mm -hmm. is somebody whose style complements your own. So if you are really outgoing, somebody who is that little bit more introverted can go right. deep and, and vice versa. Yes. Well, if, I, if I'm working with somebody that goes very, very deep and they can dig into complex problems and find multiple opportunities there, if they don't think about the other people, because that's not what they're thinking of, they're drilled down on the problem. I always wonder, well, I give you so many referrals, why can't, why don't you help me? I hear yeah. that all the time. I give so many referrals, I don't get them back. Okay. And when I try to explain to people, other people don't think that way. They're mm -hmm. not thinking about who else could be involved here. So you have to teach people. Okay. To connect you to a referral. It is not their natural thought process. So again, if you go with the partner, they'll do something that will allow you to then let them know that person is a referral for me. And if they have been solving that prospect's problem to a really, really high level of satisfaction with their expertise, of course they can recommend that their, pro their client has a conversation with you, right? But don't ask them to recognize that. That's not the way they think. Gotcha, so they, they've built the credibility and the trust but because of they just don't recognize the opportunity because their brain just doesn't doesn't they don't think, that way. think right. that way. And so for somebody who's a natural connector, then they just need to like yourself, a natural connector just needs to help educate that person on well. And it kind of goes back to that old tried and true what to look out for, what to listen for, but really in a much more narrow and strategic way where you've already, a place where you've already got that relationship versus anywhere on the street. Exactly, and you can really pinpoint it. If I'm working with somebody who is like, for example, if you've been in the chamber a long time and mm -hmm. you have a lot of clients there and I come in fairly new, right? And I go around and I recognize clients. And I, I mean, I recognize prospects. And you've known me, say, outside a long time. And I know I can help those people. I can go to you and say, Jasmine, I know you're yeah. super busy. I'd like to keep your name in play in the broader organization. But if I ask you for introductions to your clients, you know what I do. Would you be willing to introduce me? Of course you would. Yeah. Well, these are your clients. These are your, your peeps, if you will. I'm the newcomer. Well, but and it, and then it makes me, it makes me look good too, because if I put, you know, my client, somebody who I know, a trusted contact in front of 
an expert who then brings great, them great results. It just, it builds my social, it further builds my credibility, right? That not only am I a knowledgeable, experienced, intelligent person, but I surround myself with other excellent professionals. And you want a client for life, right? In yeah. your business, you could. You could have people that come and work with you and they get to a certain level and then they may go off and come again. So the best way to have a client for life is to continue to bring them value. Yeah. So you can send them articles of things they're interested in. That's great. That's a tactic. But what if you brought them a live person? What if you offered them expertise on something they had not yet addressed? You yeah. continue to bring them value, which then if you train that new person to bring you back in the picture, now you're just helping people. It's a very natural dance if you line up with the right people. That's the biggest challenge. You can't do that with just anybody. And so that's where those connectors can help you make that right match. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about that because you hit the nail really on the head there. And you and I have had many conversations about this over the years. Uh, for those who don't know, I've done uh, extensive referral training with Victoria. She's really, everything I know about networking and, and that has led to my success today comes from working with Victoria and our association with the Gilbert Chamber. Um, and so... That, that uh, so I've had, got firsthand experience there, but we've talked a lot about the fact that uh, it really is like finding those right people is, it's hard. I mean, we, it, you hear it said all the time, like, oh, you just find a referral partner, but uh, it's really easy to say, very hard to do. So um, what are some, some things to consider when thinking about that? Well, the first thing to consider is that you share an ideal client. So if yeah. you're working with high level professionals, those are the best people for me to help because yes. they are the business and they need people go for trusted advisors. People look for referrals. They don't, they don't just go sure. looking at the directory, even if it is the chamber directory. Yep. So that's the first one. We serve the same kind of people. The second one is I'm, you know, if I am out there doing things and you are already trained in what I do, well, who better than someone who's taken my training? Yes. If I'm working for solutions and I've been your client, who, of course I can recognize the solution. You just, you just helped me, right? Yeah. The other thing is that I offer a thin slice of marketing to a very expert level. Okay. You offer a specific form of marketing and you have grown your expertise dramatically over the last decade so that if you bring my piece in and I help them with that on the ground face-to-face, -face, your internet strategies are going to work a whole lot better because you can bring them into the same person and help them broaden their marketing. I don't think we'll ever, ever lose the need for face-to-face -face networking. As long as you're dealing with trust, you have to have that component, no matter how much technology you use, you just have to, if you want to work with very high-end clients and not too many, right? The client's right for you, you want to charge premium prices, and you want to be appreciated for your value. That well, takes and I'd, I'd counter that even just, I think, yeah, I think for probably 90% of businesses, there's a small majority where at some point, the, the, you know, if you're selling a, com a commodity type product, but I agree 100%, like, and that's one of the things people find it strange, you know, my focus is digital marketing, and when I'm sitting down and talking to them about their marketing, I'm saying, hey, 50% of what you're doing with your marketing budget, whether it's your time, or your money should be going into networking and community efforts because there, I don't see that going away anytime soon. There's just simply no better way to market your business. So I a hundred percent agree with that. It, it, it's, it's definitely a key component to a successful marketing strategy and it complements. I mean, the idea that um, they're two separate ones, it complements your digital marketing. The two work together so well. So you're absolutely right about that. Yeah, and it's totally what you said. It's the fundamentals of communication. If yeah. over 80% of what you communicate is the visual, mm -hmm. the person, and the sound, their voice, right? I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why videos and things like that are extremely powerful. Yeah. And that's become a very popular, effective way of, you know, getting more marketing traction online. Of course, it's visual audio, the content. Everybody knows that by now. It's like 7% of the impact is content. So. There you go.
But no, I mean, you're right. The video, mar the, the success of video marketing it absolutely tells us that it's that even in the digital format, people are looking for those personal connections, but, and, and especially for, like you said, smaller businesses and those trusted advisors, like those are, they're built on relationships. Those businesses are built on relationships. That's not going to change. I don't care how digital our world becomes. Um, there's just certain things that you, that it's not going to make sense. It makes sense to hire somebody, you know, so to speak. And so, um, that's where referral marketing definitely plays because it's how do you, how do you find those? But I think there's that, you know, that component in there. Um, and I just wanted to circle back because to make sure that I kind of caught what you said in there because I thought it was a good tidbit. So when looking at your referral partner, one of the great, it's what I heard is one of the excellent places to start would be um, a former client who is targeting the same ideal client that you are, the same market that you are. Yeah. Yeah, one of the first questions I, I give people like a little script to try to interview the people they meet to see, right? We've had a great conversation. Mm -hmm. We can help each other. Okay, do you serve the same ideal client? Yes. Are, do your clients need what I do? Yes. Do my clients need what you do? Yes. Okay, good. We're in. I mean, it just kind of starts right there. Well, and I think to me, the key piece there was the former client. Because I think I, to me, I'd always thought of a referral partner more as maybe somebody I'd met networking or just did similar things as I did. But I love that idea of if it's somebody that who's worked directly with you, because then they have that firsthand experience. And that always is a little tricky um, if they haven't. So I think that's a great kind of first place to look, because if you've got somebody who meets that criteria, who is serving that same audience that has that firsthand experience, they can tell an authentic story then as well, right? Much more easily. Right. And I've used your services over the years. The idea about clients for life, when you share clients with an evolving solution, one that yeah with your clients, why wouldn't you all stay in the same family? That's called the right. tribe, right? Everybody loves to talk about the tribe. That's a really good one to create. Well, and I think it's an interesting take on the tribe because I had always seen the tribe concept more of this idea of you build this like kind of huge following for yourself. But really what you're saying is you're building, well, the true definition of a word network, right? You're building this network or a community, if you will, um, of people. And so it's, it's less about having one kind of key person in the center. It's more about having um, a whole bunch of really great people that are then connected in multiple ways to each other. Right. And that's two of the concepts I've really refined over time. And one is a referral network versus a network. And those are the maybe 20, maybe 30 people mm -hmm. that you need that can connect you to your ideal clients. And that, I don't mean referrals. I mean, they can connect you either just an introduction, but yeah. they're, they're in that group. And if you think about 20 people, how often can you talk to them in a year? Right. Versus 500, right? And then the other factor, of course, is that when you're all looking for the same clients, you continue to circle in that, in that group. So, and the other uh, idea that everybody is a referral partner, no, they're not. I, yeah. may, I may be a, a networking partner for you, a buddy for you. I may be a connector and never give you a referral. But it's okay because I've connected you with the people you need to know. So people play different roles in your referral network. Well, and I think that's one of the common misconceptions about, you know, traditional referral teams or leads groups is that everybody in there is your referral partner. And that just is not, like you said, that people may provide value to your business in different ways, but to think that you're going to get particularly outside referrals from everybody in that room, it's just not realistic. Well, kind of the back to what you said about, um, you know, the, the interconnecting your network, the fundamental primary rule of referrals is it is a trusted introduction. Yeah. It means that it is not to a stranger. It is somebody who knows somebody connecting them to somebody else that they know so that you actually broker trust, right? So if you interconnect your network, your referral network in that tighter circle, Everybody knows everybody, therefore, every introduction starts to get trusted, right? You've got to continue to strengthen and deepen the trust. And if it's just you doing it all by yourself, that's a lot of work. But get them all connected to each other, and it just happens, yeah? Yeah, so it's like you're, you're cloning yourself, but without actually cloning yourself, which as we, when we started this conversation, I think that's one of the biggest frustrations in networking, besides the fact that you're not getting the right type of referrals or the right type of leads out of it, mm -hmm. is the time factor, right? Particularly as the business grows and you get more busy, as it's, you, you feel pulled in a million different directions. Right. Right. Um, and so I love the idea that you're connecting your network to work, to work smarter, not harder. 
Yeah, and one of the things I've, I've done more recently is just writing plans for people. Mm -hmm. So if they bring me a list of their best relationships, I talk to them, I interview them about them. And I go, you know, this person can help you do this and you can do this for them and they can help you do this and they can do this for them. Well, all this person, all my client has to do is go talk to those people and say, here's what I want you to do for me. Here's what I can do for you. And people just do it. But yeah. They don't automatically think that way. So because I've trained you in every single aspect of my offering and you're going to wander into a room, I can't expect you to know what to say to that person versus that person. So once you get real specific names there and you tell them, here's, this is a prospect for me. This is what I'd like you to say. Yes. Very simple. And if they say this, offer to introduce me as a potential resource. How simple is that to create a referral, right? Right. And well, and very natural. And it, it you know, it, cause then it's just, you're offering help. You're offering a solution. You're not yeah. that pushy salesperson, right? Even if yeah. it's not, it's still pushy sales. Even if you're not pushy selling your business. Well, in that context, the yeah, whole thing about you have to show interest in the other person, right? Yeah. Well, I'm talking to you and uncovering a problem. Yeah. And if you're there to give first, I'm going to give you a resource. My friend, Victoria Trafton. Yeah. Well, you've just fulfilled two of the concepts of good networking in a way that generates a referral. It's just getting a little more intentional about it. Yep. I have to say, you know, it's interesting. I got this LinkedIn introduction today. And one of the things that's been driving me a little crazy about LinkedIn is I'm just getting so many, like, like, you know, all the things we, you coach people on what to do wrong when they're networking in person in a room, like these people are doing on LinkedIn. And I got this. And so I saw this request come through yesterday, this message, and I completely ignored it because I assumed it was another pushy sales pitch, but I was in there in my inbox today and I read it and it was the most refreshing, like, Hey, listen, if you'd be interested in publishing an article on my network, let me know. And here's this group we've got. And I looked at the group and it was a fantastic group. And I responded, I was like, thank you so much for not giving me that pushy sales pitch. So you're absolutely right. Like it, it grabs people's attention when you sort of offer that right piece of information at the right time versus right. just kind of jumping straight in. Exactly. Exactly. And, and again, if you're kind of working the way I'm teaching people to work, if I know who's in your network, and you can connect us somehow on LinkedIn with that import, that valuable yeah. piece of information. And then knowing that you're ultimately going to connect them with me anyway, yeah. we have all these wonderful tools. We can find out who knows whom. So exploring the edges of your network is so easy for me. If okay. I don't mind, I don't have to wait for you to bring it up. I just go, Hey, you know, these people, I want to meet them. Let's go. Gotcha. And so some of the ways that you can have, so if somebody's listening to this and they're, this is resonating with them. They're feeling burnt out with networking or they're really kind of questioning the results they're getting. Some of the ways that you can help them is to look at their network and, and kind of evaluate like where those places are. Right. Um, and it sounds like you can also then help them with that, creating that excellent introduction that gets somebody to respond and say, wow, this is really refreshing. Thank God. Thank you for connecting, uh, connecting with me. You can right. help them kind of craft that right message as well. Yes, when I look at what somebody does and what they offer and who they are as a person, and I help them then by saying, okay, this is what you can offer through your partners by way of an introduction. And I, I help them write that language. I actually write the language because if mm -hmm. they write the language, it sounds like marketing speak. Gotcha. If they write the language, it's customer speak. And I'll tell you that, and they use that template, they give it to their partner, they get the intro. The number one request I get is just tell me what to say. What did you just say? Please tell me what to say. And that goes back to our natural ability, if we're outside of ourselves, to talk about ourselves first, or we talk about someone else. Right. What I, do, I, I can't explain what I do well. Well, that's just what I do. But someone else can see it. Yeah. So that's why having partners, even to test out your message, even to think about, well, what would I say to them? To have the same experience as you. Well, you know that thing I did for you, like the past client, right? Yeah. You interview them, you say, you know, when I worked with you, what was your best result? Oh, well, it was it was X. Right. Well, how did how did you describe that? Great. Can I have that? Now that's your language of what to be shared with someone else. It's what your client said. And I can't run to my prospect and say, Do you know what my client said about me? I mean, I could. But why wouldn't I get my partner to say, you know, I was just talking to Victoria's client. It's really interesting what they said. Yeah. 
It's just coming from real language, which is part of what you do, which is helping people, right? You come up with your key messages that your yeah. ideal clients are going to resonate with. Yeah. And in networking, you just do that individually, right? Yeah. You do that with your clients, you get it, you capture it, you give it to someone else. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely, you're correct. So um, we've, t we've talked a little bit about this and I, th I think this is something that could really surprise people. So if they go all in, somebody goes all in on really investing in their referral marketing strategy. So going beyond saying, I'm not just going to show up to this weekly leads group or, you know, kind of do some very non-intentional, like I go to an event here, I go to an event there, but really get intentional and serious about it. What kind of impacts, um, can that have on the business? And I'm thinking specifically some of those percentages you've got in terms of the number of, of how much of your basically new business that can drive. Okay. When I personally interviewed people or looked at statistics from networking books, mm -hmm. there's a lot of books now on the science of networking. <laughs> it generally takes somebody who has a more of a high level service, not an mm -hmm. obvious trade, but yep. something yep. to it. It takes them about three to five years to get established in their business. Okay. And if they could accelerate that into one year, which is about what they can, yeah. that's really going to events at least twice a week or twice a, twice a month, generally more like once a week. Mm -hmm. And if you are meeting the same people at those events, yep. about 12 to 18 months, you can start to expect to see a more steady stream okay. of calls coming from yep. that. What if you could accelerate the six months? Wow. So that every event you go to, you're going to have an objective or two objectives. You're going to come out of there with a result. If you don't get the result you need, you know right away, this morning breakfast isn't my event. Now, you may go twice, you may whatever, but yeah. every event has its own kind of person that comes there and it has its own value. So in a chamber, if they have, I don't know, 30 events a month, give or take. Morning people, evening people. People interested in technology, people interested in the restaurant opening. You've got to find people. And that's where you spend your time. And if you have partners and it's working for the two of you now, well, where do you network? How do you meet these people? And mm -hmm. they're introducing you. So everything gets much more intentional. Yeah. And I think you really do. So if we're saying going from 12 to 18 months down to six months, um, if we're going from three to five years down to one year, what we're talking about is what? Accelerate like three times faster. Okay. okay. Is, is a very scientific calculation there. It's about No, no, no. Faster. No, that's, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's interesting because I know a lot of people that they, they want to get there faster. So it sounds like it's absolutely realistic yes. to do so that they've just got to really focus and be intentional. And, and uh, what, what, how, what realistically is a percentage of your business that you could, the lead or qualified prospects that you could generate ver, via a really intentional referral strategy? Depending on what you do, obviously some people need 10 referrals a year, maybe yeah. a advisor with a million dollar plus portfolios, yeah. and some people need 50 referrals a year, depending on what you do. If you, um, sorry, I've got the question. Basically what I'm getting at is those stats that we've got on your website, which is like, so, and, and I know you kind of do it in phases. So like your first, first phase of your, you're done some networking. You're saying, no, I really want to take it to that next level. Like what percentage, um, is it realistic? Can you expect to generate via referral? Because I think what we're saying, there's some really attractive things about being able to be more efficient with your time yes. and yes. do things quicker. But like, what are we talking about in terms of, is it, you know, 30% of my new business, 40, 50, because I think that's a, something that would be of interesting to people to understand like the, po the power, how powerful referral marketing can be. So two ways referral marketing is powerful. If you do all of the, if you do all of the activities you need to do in the first year to yeah. get established, then you can expect that in following years, you're doing maybe a third of the activity or a fourth of the activity. Okay. So things in time is not just in the one year, right? It's ongoing to sustain it. Yep. Working with the referral partner, I would say that in the first year, let's take a year just because it you had yeah. time to work it yep. out. But depending on what you do, some faster, some slower. But supposing you're working with a partner, if they can generate between 
10 to 20 percent of your referral revenue and that doesn't mean you stop anything else i'm talking sure. 10 to 20 percent you should be able to get it to 30 or 40 even 50 percent with that person and sustain it see that's the wow. big deal once yeah. you learn and you're with the right person so the right person matches up on the size and the type of business if i need a hundred referrals for a year and you need 10 we're not a match okay yep person is so important but i have a goal of getting all of my business from two okay. people and 20 percent uh so 40 40 and 20 percent will come by self-referral okay my job in networking is to have 20 percent of my business just follow me home <laughs> which will happen i mean if you're an expert in what you do yeah there's going to be some people that are going to just love that out of the gate yep in the past it happened but i networked like a maniac in three different places and i gave uh, approximately three network three talks a month so it's easy to get them to follow you home that's a lot of activity yeah but then if i have two partners what i want yeah. from those two partners is 40 percent and i want all my business by referral by the way that's all i've ever done yeah since i did it and that 40 percent is because they're their solution is so perfect to make yep. money work, that that's it. That's why I only want two, because I know that there's a couple elements of marketing that are important. Well, for example, I'm exploring a relationship with a photographer now, mm -hmm. a portrait photographer. She is phenomenal. Think about this. If you are out there to show your face, and when I introduce you, you're a real person. When I talk about you, you're not. But if I give your name and your personality and your energy and everything about you comes through on a photograph of you on your website, that whole thing about face-to-face -face build trust is right there. Yes. Yeah. Unless you have images of yourself that somehow communicate who you are and not just the headshot. <laughs> right. That yeah. just, I mean, it's like a picture's worth a thousand words. So yeah. the idea of a very powerful marketing you know all the pieces that go to it along with the idea about i can have your energy communicated when you're not there when i refer you if i refer you, you go to somebody's website right there right and if now on that website there's a visual image that's powerful but everything has to be about a personal brand you cannot be a generic provider or it doesn't matter any photograph will do right it's got to be so personal that it yeah. just that's who you are both the website as well as the photograph. Well, which, which fits your ideal client, which is those high level service professionals, which they've got to stand out from the crowd in many ways because yeah. there's a thousand financial advisors or financial planners out there. So you've got to really highlight what makes you different and that's every aspect of your brand. So the visual as well as the verbal, what comes out of your mouth and that does start with that, that, that picture of yourself. Too. Right. And I never thought about a photograph being that important, but um, decisions prove in science, decisions are made on emotions first, and yeah. human beings are wired to see and decide safe, not safe. Yeah. And so it is the actual image that, that draws us to someone or repels us from someone. So yeah. if you can communicate that somehow in a photograph, <laughs> that's extremely powerful. Yeah. If, if you can't, it's okay. I just have to work a little harder. But if I can do that or reinforce it, Wow, which is why I have my photograph on a card. Yeah. And, uh, and since you've designed my cards, you're the one that put it on there. And it was a little, little uncomfortable at first, but I liked it because I don't remember names well. It's a secret, don't tell anybody. But <laughs> if you have a picture, I never forget a face. Yeah. So extend that courtesy to someone else. But the bigger thing is, if people like my picture and they feel comfortable, and it's usually a more casual, friendly shot, they're going to be more comfortable even listening about me. Yep. Much less following through, right? So that experience I've had with that card, which gets a lot of positive comments, the one that, well, you know, it, you did it. Yeah. Yeah. I get a lot of positive comments off that card. And at a, at a networking event where somebody says, somebody gave me your card. This is really you, isn't it? And I said, yes. And they just, you can tell they smile like they know me already. They just smile. I love oh, your card. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so it works.
So that personal touch. Well, you're obviously incredibly passionate about referral <laughs> uh, strategy and referral networking. So what is it that this is the question we ask all our interviewees, just something that we'd love to get to that motivation. And so what is it that like, gets you excited about every day getting up and doing this and keeps you passionate about your business. Yeah. You know, I love results. And, um, when I was a workaholic, I just cranked out results all the time. So now if I can put two people together and they get results, they'll get bigger results than I will alone. So it's like amplifying my results. But the bigger yeah. thing is when you connect people for good, I'm a matchmaker at heart. And I think to get philosophical, I can't fix the world around me. I can't fix the polarization. I can't fix any of that stuff. But if I can put two people together that go out and make a better positive impact, I just feel like I'm making a difference in the world. So I don't listen to the news. I just go out and match people up and they have great success and they celebrate and they fall in love. This is great. Changing the world two people at a time. I love it. There you go. Well, thank you so much uh, for your interview today. Um, how would, if somebody's listened to this interview and likes what we're having to say and says, I want to know more about what Victoria does and, um, her, and potentially even talk to her about how I can ignite my referral strategy, um, how would those people find you? Well, my, my business name is very difficult to remember. It's Victoria Trafton. So... <laughs> Online, victoriatrafton.com would bring up something about me. Um, but the other way is that if somebody sends me an email, and it's just my initials, vt at victoriatrafton.com, and says, I really love helping people, and I want to help people help me, I will talk to that person. I will give them a, they'll, we'll set up a conversation. And because I'm a matchmaker at heart, I'll give them an idea about who the very best person for them is as a referral partner. And I, what I love about that is they usually already know that person. Ah, well, th well, that's a great tidbit right there. So chances are you already know your right referral partner. Yes, you do. You yes, just can't see that forest for the trees. You don't know how to help each other and you don't know how to tell each other what you need. It's sort of like an infant. Unless they learn how to cry, they don't get fed. Well, no crying. You just need some words. But you got to know who they are and then, you know, you figure it out. And so I will say, so as the person who's in charge of your website, if you go to Victoria's website, which we will have the link in the show notes, she's got a, she will, she has a link on there where you can schedule a one-to-one -one consultation as well. So in addition to that direct email and, um, coming soon, we'll have a referral quiz on there where you can um, go in and kind of get a taste for Victoria's uh, formula, how it works in that process, um, and, and see a little bit of information that way. So uh, definitely check those two resources out on her website as well, and we'll have the link in the show notes. And so I would they, like to say, if yeah. they know you, Jasmine, if they follow your work, if they know their work, I'd like your work, I'd like to know that too, because it's all about connecting with the people that know the people we trust. All right. So listeners, you heard that. If you saw this on the show or you know myself or, or part of my team, Danny, who does all our work behind the scenes, tell Victoria that because she'd love to know that too. So thank you so much, Victoria. Thank you for taking the time uh, to talk with us about referral marketing today. Thanks, Jasmine. I appreciate that you really know the power and you appreciate it and you use it in your own business. So it's all good. Absolutely. We hope you enjoyed episode seven of the SMB Labs podcast presented by 910 West. Remember, we experiment with small business so you don't have to. If you have any small business friends, please be sure to share this podcast with them. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. <laughs>